whatever you do, Allianz with its global partners is the power on your side. Welcome back. You may be surprised to learn that about two billion people, that's a third of the planet, have never made a phone call. In development circles, there is much talk about the use of appropriate technology, making sure whatever is put into place to help a community is actually useful to its people. And appropriate technology is especially important in the poorest countries, like Bangladesh. On the streets of Bangladesh, the bicycle rickshaws far outnumber the motor vehicles. Everywhere you look in busy villages like this, there's evidence of how this nation copes with having one of the densest populations in the world. Buses packed so full that it's common to see riders on top. Subsistence farmers working their plots of land with primitive tools. In a place like this, novel approaches to development are more than welcome. Well, the Grameen Bank uh, started off uh, experimenting with giving loans to the poor people. Uh, at that time, the idea was that the bank cannot lend money to the poor people because they are not creditworthy. Nearly 25 years ago, Professor Mohammed Yunus created the Grameen Bank. Its goal, to deal with the poverty here, one village at a time. So we tried out uh, in one village back in 1976, and it worked. We lend money to 2.4 million borrowers. 95% of them are women, all very poor women. In what's now known worldwide as the Grameen model, the bank lends money, usually less than 200 US dollars per loan, to help village entrepreneurs. Hello? In the small village of Jal Sukar, Fatima owns the village payphone, bought with her third Grameen loan. There's a farm nearby. They call to find out the prices for their eggs. I make the connection for them. Eight zero. Eight zero. Double one. The phones cost around 330 US dollars. When we visited, Fatima had only a few more payments to make on her two-year loan. I have peace of mind now. I feel much better off now. Technology can play a very important role in changing the life of the poor people, particularly with the information technology. Uh, we set up a company called Grameen Phone with the purpose that we'll bring this telephone in the hands of the poor women in the villages of Bangladesh. Hello? The woman will take that phone uh, with the Grameen Bank loan and then start a business, selling the telephone service to the people in the village and make money. The phone program is expanding across the country. The bank expects a total of 68,000 women like Fatima will be village telephone operators. <laughs> In the town of Modapur, a division of the bank, called Grameen Communications, has set up an experiment. This village computer and internet project gives people their first hands-on encounter with a computer. From kindergarten lessons on CD-ROM, to adult software classes. Tarek Alam is the project's director. We have many courses. One is a computer fundamental, and also we have a programming course. The project also introduced the people here to electronic mail. Through the email service, a lot of villagers, they are mailing to their relatives very low cost. Sending or receiving an email costs less than 27 US cents. Much cheaper than a phone call, even less than postage, and faster and more reliable. This woman told us she used to spend more than 30 US dollars a month to call her husband who works in Kuwait. That's more than a month's salary for the average family here. Perhaps you are doing well. Now, older man, he has a son who is doing PhD program in the UK. He came to our office just to mail to his son and say, when you will come back and how is he? 
We didn't do anything with him. We just told him that you have an email facility here, you can email and you can contact. With my living life. He said, okay, I will try first. He emailed to his son, and he got a reply after two hours back. And he says, very interesting, and it's a very low cost. Happy. Okay. Your good health. My work has convinced me that all people are basically very smart. You don't have to spend a minute when they see something is useful. They pick it up very quickly. All kinds of um, superstitions, all kinds of ignorance melt away. The moment they see this is something useful. For many in Bangladesh, the dot-com craze of the West seems a world away. But Tarek hopes farmers here will use the internet too. One plan is to put local pineapple growers in direct contact with the wholesalers in Dhaka, the capital city. Right now, farmers must sell their goods to middlemen. I show them uh, on the list of the wholesaler. When they see it, they say, okay, very good, because we have the information, so maybe next time we can directly contact with them. Once you can bring internet, you open up the door uh, of the village to the whole world. So the village becomes part of the world. And when the village goes global, says Professor Yunus, there's no more need for the middleman. If you can connect the ultimate consumer with the original producer, you cut off everything. And instead of you, the producer, getting the bare backbone, you get a reasonable return. And consumer is happy, you are happy. To keep developing nations from being left behind, stranded on the opposite bank of a digital divide, Professor Yunus is calling for a world commission to help countries like his get plugged in. Internet opens you up, you're a free human being. And you can find your kind of person in the world, wherever you want to be. And you can build your life the way you want to be. If we can bring the information technology to the full potential for the people. Coming up, a hole in the wall gives these kids a window to the World Wide Web. We'll show you what they find when we visit their virtual village in a moment.